Greetings and welcome everyone. It's All You Can Geek Movie Cast, episode 708. I'm working host Jim Gast, joined by Mike Sneedy. What's up? Corey Feinson. Yo. And Tony Kokonakis. Time to make the chimichangas. <laughs> welcome guys, welcome listener viewers. Are we uh, live on Twitch? <laughs> mm-hmm. We've had some, we've had a fun night tonight and I, uh, we, our podcast is uh, moving along. We did our spoiler cast for Deadpool and Wolverine, so if you guys have not... Um, listen to that yet go check that out uh it'll be posted in one sequence for you those on youtube so if you're watching us on youtube by the way hit that subscribe button we do appreciate it this is the movie cast though folks 708 uh we are in a new mcu universe uh are they back is mcu back is the, is the marvel universe back i mean i don't know if it's back i'd say it's the movie not well anywhere. anywhere i mean it seems to be some interesting ideas this is the only one. marvel movie this year forward, right? yeah I mean, this is the movie, but 211 million opening weekend, guys. That's huge. For what movie, Jim? Oh, for Deadpool and Wolverine. Right. Sorry, folks. Sorry, folks. Um, which we've all watched. We just, like I said, did the spoiler cast. So we will give uh, quick opinions here if you didn't, if you haven't watched it yet, which, good luck, because the spoilers are... Variety was spoiling the cameos, the, the appearances of characters. Every, um, everyone on Twitter read it. Like, I'm just like, holy yeah. crap. This is yeah, a- if you didn't see it this weekend, you were, yeah. you're getting spoiled. Yeah. It's hard to not. So, but I I we, I love the movie. Uh, I thought it was fantastic. Um, I want to go back and see it. That's a good sign. Um, Tony. Yeah, I thought it was great. I mean, if you liked first or second Deadpool, you're gonna like it. Same kind of you know, stuff. I think uh, they obviously had a bit of a bigger budget with you know Disney slash Marvel instead of you know, Fox. Um, and I mean, frankly, if you even cared about the Fox X Men. Like movies in the past, I would recommend you see it. Mm-hmm. You know, I won't give it a rating, but it's enjoyable, entertaining. Last we had, uh, and you get in early while the people are still going out to see it. I think you're gonna have a good theater experience, which to me, you know, that's kind of drives a little bit of the MCU for me, where it's like I want to be there with other people that are enjoying the movie because it adds to that rather than just like sitting at home watching. And, oh yeah, that was cool. Yeah. yeah. Cool. Um, Corey. Yeah, no, I agree with all those points, Tony. Like the the theater experience, and that's one of the things that I think this movie like it sells, and why I'm sure it's made so much money is because going to the theater to experience this film is a lot of fun. It's, it's a just, ride. It's really fun to see this movie in the theater. Yeah. It's probably the most fun I've had in the theater this year, even though there's been some fantastic movies that have come out in this. But the theater experience, like you said, is is really cool, and because you get moments in this film where people are going ah oh, ooh and and you get things that are touching on the Fox universe that we, we grew up with. And so uh, definitely recommend just going to see it, obviously, if you're you know, for a certain age. Because it is R-rated, and it is very bloody and gory, and there's a lot of foul language. But uh, they, do, um, they do a fantastic job with these characters, and seeing Wolverine unleashed, essentially, it was really cool. Yeah, yeah, that was awesome. Yeah, the full fury of Wolverine. Um, Mike? Yeah, yeah no, uh, again, uh, if you're a fan of, like, you know, the old X-Men movies or Wolverine, like I am, it's definitely something you want to see. Uh, Zach, honestly, like, the Deadpool stuff, is, I'm a little less high on, because, you know, when you get, like, you know, you know, multiverse, time travel, fourth wall breaking, you do sort of, like, the plot doesn't really matter that much, but it's all right. It's It was a real fun movie, and just a, a fun thing for you know wolverine or x-men fans hugh jackman fans you know mm-hmm. and uh yeah we get to see him a little bit unlike we've seen him ever before really and uh seems like you have super strength this time too yeah we're canada fans because there's a lot of <laughs> canadian <laughs> reference no there was like yeah, it's no, actually it was. i read this article yeah. about like how i think all the writers are from canada too yeah. maybe Ron Rose, you know and stuff like that so i was like oh yeah, okay. this is his baby more than maybe more than any of his other i guess the second movie I mean, he did a lot of writing too. on this film yeah 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 he was the writer <laughs> so yeah there was a cameo that they spoiled in the last trailer of the film and yeah. they did that because that that they um, wanted actor, that actor to show up on the red carpet right 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 yeah, yeah, yeah. And so i was yeah. like well if they show up it's kind of obvious yeah. <laughs> so i was like oh but, yeah so but no i thought it was great i thought the villain really cool Sandra Nova I think that actress did a fantastic job oh she was perfect casting like oh my gosh like the way she looked at the end of the movie was awesome I don't want to spoil anything obviously but yeah listen to the spoilers but the 
but like the costume design and just like even just her like her gauntness <laughs> it's like yeah perfect. yeah no i thought it was great film um and all that yeah i think it's great but cool i uh, know i it was a, it's a great film uh it's the number one movie in the world right now internationally um domestically it is like i said 211 million uh opening. highest highest r opening highest r opening movie of all time and also internationally at 484 i think it did if i remember right um 484 million which puts it like sixth i think on the charts right mm -hmm. so far yeah. so um I mean, I'm a... four domestically overall just okay in domestics and then six um, six international right uh, i think it's six i'm a little surprised honestly like i obviously like i'm you know i I'm, I'm happy about it. I've always held a, a, more than you guys. I think I've held a bit of a candle for the Fox universe and Wolverine in particular. Uh, but this, you know, this shows that people kind of care about it more than maybe we thought in bigger numbers. Or, or it's just the fact that Not it's me. through this. I was close. This Marvel, <laughs> this Marvel thing, uh, Marvel window of it. Or lens, Did, but, I, I'm going back to bold predictions. I think I may have had this one. But I'm, I have to go back and find out. I well, I guess I'm not supposed to look at that until the end of the year, right? Yeah. Keep it sealed? Yeah. Yeah. Keep it sealed. Fine. I know but, I projected this to be one of two movies to make a billion. I, I, it two. I think I went bold. I, I did bold prediction. No, I think I did like 1.6. 1. 1. I think I did like 1.6 bold. So I think I'm... Yeah, my bold prediction was that nothing would, but this would be the closest. So... Yeah. Mm. Oh, that's not going to happen. Nope. Not, that was, that was, but bold. Opening. It'd have but, to have the worst uh, multiplier. Yeah, of, of all time. It would, it would have to break new records the other way. <laughs> yeah, and so far, uh, Monday and Tuesday were no, insane. The, the word of mouth is, with how fun this that's, movie is. That's really what yeah. it was, right? Yeah. The word of mouth. Like, I was pretty high. Like, I thought we were going to definitely go 180, you know, maybe even touch 190. I was like, 200, you have to really get the walk-up yeah. uh, mm -hmm. to break that kind of barrier. Which, yeah. It killed it at the walk-ups. Yeah, it did. And I think I posted it, it was like 41% or something. Yeah. Like that, which is yeah. sick. Because, you know, it just goes to show that, like, you know, because I know last year was pretty downer of a year for Marvel for the most part, except for Guardians, right? Yeah. Uh, and this just goes to show if you have, you know, a good story to tell, a good movie, right? And you give people what they want, right? Even if it's not something they necessarily know they want, people show up, you know, and see it and i just think um it was unfortunate you know uh for various reasons it was ant-man and marvel that suffered last year but this i think proves that you know they, as long as they know how to do it and they can execute on it they don't, you know i don't have a problem you know i don't have a question in my mind that captain america is going to be great now that uh, avengers which we'll get into later in the podcast yeah. uh, is going to be set up for success as well it was just a, hey you know there's some doubts, and I think this should hopefully alleviate those people of them. Yeah, I think I, I, I don't know why, but I think it renewed the It interest. feels like they have a direction now of where they're going. Before it felt like they were just kind of, what are we doing? Like, okay, we'll go here, we'll go here, and literally multiverse. We're gonna go everywhere, uh, and doesn't didn't really well, have a direction. Now it feels. I like do that. think, I do think it's a little, you know, this movie may not have much to do with the rest of what's happening. But I guess we'll see. We'll see the, about, about its impact. Necessarily, I mean, we'll see these characters again, but it's not necessarily impact. But the one thing they, the, they to the the crux of the movie, I guess, is kind of that, that's got introduced. I don't know if we want to say it here, but what that, how that impacts the rest of the Marvel universe, I think, is going to be important. I think so too, and uh, you know, and and with the money that this movie made, uh, is making, these guys are going to do it till they're. Um, they're gonna be doing till they're ninety. Uh, we'll talk about people getting the truck full of cash. Yeah. Oh God. Yeah. We're gonna do that shortly. So, guys, uh, other things we've watched. Uh, this I haven't watched much. I played a lot of video games this week, so this was it for me. Uh, Tony. Uh, let's see. Uh, big thing was I started that anime that Corey had recommended, um, Solo Leveling. Oh, you did. Uh, okay. Yeah. I'm. Uh, I think I have like two or three episodes. Um. And it's good. Don't get me wrong. It's very entertaining. The animation is good, but I'm starting to see because I'm like, oh, there's only a couple episodes left, and I'm like, I don't think anybody, like any other character, is doing anything in the series where it's like, it's like the main character, like that's the main attraction, and there's nothing wrong with that. But I was like, oh, I was like, 
all these other characters might as well just not exist. It's like, you know, we talk about, uh, well, I won't say it for spoilers, but it's like, oh, this person's the only special person. Like, everybody else yeah. doesn't matter. So I was like, oh, that's a little disappointing because, like, I thought those first two episodes were really strong. I'm like, oh, like, now Corey talked about it, he's like the weakest hunter. And it's like, mm-hmm. oh, maybe he has to rely on these other characters to help him. It's like, nah, they're just, yeah. after this, these two episodes, they're just like, whatever. Yeah. but uh excellent animation um and yeah we'll look forward to that uh, cool. sequel or whatever when it happens cool all right uh mike i did watch deadpool 2 before going in to see uh deadpool and wolverine and it was okay it wasn't great but no but it was all right the ending of it you understand why we said you have to watch the because this really that picked up you know keeping it vague but yeah. It's, you need to know, you need to really watch Deadpool 2, I think. So. I mean, it definitely helps. It helps me know where uh, certain characters are, though. Yeah. I will. A minor non spoiler for the new movie Cable is not involved in the new movie at all. No. So, that was interesting. Uh, there's Domino. I like the Domino character. Yeah, me too. Yeah, I forgot. Yeah, she. I don't know. Um, she's not around either. Budgetary spoiler reasons. For, I guess so. Um. But, all right. It was okay, but, you know, not that great. <laughs> All right. Uh, Corey? Uh, nothing special. I don't, I don't think I got to do anything else, really. All right. Nope. We, um, we mentioned the box office chart. Uh, it was very good. 284, I think, million total for the weekend for the box office. Because, like, Twisters did very well. 34 million. Yeah, Twisters still yeah. holding up pretty 34, easy. almost 35 million. Uh, Despicable Me 4 was at, like, 14 million, which is, like, a 40% drop. They're all, all good holds. Inside Out, Inside Out Two was another one that was a low drop, thirty percent drop. It's I think. Fifteen domestically. Yeah. Jesus Christ. Yeah. yeah. Uh, but this is killing it. So we'll see what yeah, the holds are. Say, like my theater was, not, and I went to see a Friday matinee. And it was yeah. Still kind of naughty. I was like. Yeah. Again, it felt like you know, like when I went to see No Way Home or something like that, or you know. It was, yeah, it was cool. Yeah. Oh, it's it crazy. Is like I um I went to see it at three o'clock on Thursday at the Pool Wolverine. So that's the fan thing. Whatever. Yeah. Yeah. And I didn't realize though. I also I bought a ticket for the six o'clock show also, and I was like, oh shoot! So I canceled that. Like, I didn't want to spend two, the whole day two in the theater, yeah. the back to back. But then like after I was like, oh, maybe I should have watched <laughs> it. And I, <laughs> because after I saw, it, I was like, I should have just stayed because it's the same theater. Like, oh man, I probably should have stayed. And so I went back and looked, and it was already sold. I was like, holy crap! Wow. Like, gone. I was like, I am. Um, uh, yes, yeah. I wanted to be in like the super front, which I did not. So. Want. Yeah, I, it was some guy got very lucky because I had um, the four, I had four tickets with good seat, great seats. You know, the E section of the Dolby Cinema Theater in the middle, uh, mm-hmm. and I couldn't get the, I couldn't get a fourth person to go. Uh, so I, at five, no, maybe almost six o'clock, I returned the ticket because so I was like, well, at least we'll have like an empty seat next to us kind of thing. And then, no, we got we sat down and the, the, I'm like I told my friend I'm like you're gonna be probably not having anybody next to you. And then the guy came right in and sat down. I'm like. Like, not even trying to squat, like, in a seat. Like, he just legit knew where he was going. I'm like, okay, he bought that ticket. Oh, my God. I'm like, that's a lucky dude because <laughs> he yeah. just bought that ticket. But like I said, like, I, um, cause I canceled it before. I was like, well, I'm not going to go see it twice. So I canceled it. And after the movie, I was like, oh, man. So I looked and I was like, oh, nope, it's gone. Yeah, it's it's well gone. Uh, yeah, so, all right. Let's get in some news, guys. There's been some uh, a couple things happening this week. San Diego Comic Con also happened this week, um, and a lot of interesting news came out of there, which we'll get to Marvel shortly. But I did want to give DC its day, uh, give it some time here. They need it. There's a logo. They got a logo. Uh, we got a, some information on right, the Penguin James stuff. Gunn did it. Huh? A logo. Oh my gosh. No, but we I got mean, the. We, can, can, can you imagine being DC and then having Marvel do what they did? Oh. Think, oh, they feel bad. What the heck? And like, what DC showed up with, like, what? Nothing. What I mean, I mean, I do like the Penguin news for the I Batman never, too. Do anything like this is what when he restart everything, you gotta wait forever. Yeah. Well, we'll they're filming, forever. and the news today was guess what wrapped Superman wrapped today. So good. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Congrats to that to James Gunn because there's a lot riding on this for him. Most of the movie to be made in post. So I'm confused because I thought wasn't the Batman two being shot already? I guess not. I thought it was, but so. it's not because I mean, not the, coming out until 2026, right? Yeah, the Penguin is returning for that, and the, they told him San Diego Comic Con. But and and but he's shooting his own series right now. They're not working on the movie. Oh, so. okay. I thought they had already started. That. Or they finished the series. I don't remember, but um, 
No, I don't think they started it. Seems way far away. Yeah, I didn't think they had finished the script yet, from what I understood. (laughs) But maybe that's not true. Um, But it's 2026, that movie, The Batman 2, so we'll see. Yeah, I I don't know, but DC did wrap Superman. That's got a lot of weight on it for DC coming July of next year. And uh, what's like like a acceptable number for them for this movie like what's like okay we got we're we're we're, we're good we're, it's a solid launch for that movie you mean what they make it opening? Oh, opening weekend opening weekend opening? Yes. Is that oh, 100, 125 is that 125s i would be i, I think 100 i think 100 million would be a win and anything beyond okay. that is just gravy okay i think um, yeah if they get to 100 they won't be happy, but they'll be like, all right, at least we got to 100 and we're not embarrassed. Yeah. <laughs> but and I feel like they want this movie to do 150, especially after what they've seen. Like, this yeah. It also depends on how much they spend on it, too, obviously. Like, not as much as Marvel does, apparently. So, um, yeah. So then. Does love. I mean, he's cutting corners, you know. He does. And, so. You know, we heard, you know, there's going to be layoffs at Warner Brothers. Have yeah. Got this league budget this time. No, and you know that's the thing is, uh, at, at minimum it needs a clear, you know, it needs to be profitable. I think, right? Um, so if you just estimate a two hundred million budget, which I think is fairly average at this point for superhero movies, um, you know, I think we need to see bare six hundred million. Um, I'm not even gonna say billions in play. Um, no. I think the damage to DC movies has been done. I mean, yeah, I'd, I'd be shocked if it even clears Inside Out two domestically. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I think if you look, didn't like Justice League do like five? Like, if, they, like if Superman makes six hundred million dollars, that's that would be huge for them. That that would yeah. be like they'd be a that's a win. big success. Yeah, I mean, ugh, that's that's I don't even I have no idea how they that we'll movie makes that much money. I don't think I don't know either. So we'll see what the market's like then too. It's a year away. Yeah, oh, so, that's fair. That's fair. But changes. All right, so Marvel's panel. Marvel's back, first year back in a long time at San Diego Comic Con, and uh, man, like you guys have mentioned, it it knocked the roof off the place. I mean, it was it was electric. I felt like I watched as much as you could from that event. Like people were like streaming things that you could see. Mm-hmm. Um, started off with uh, the Captain America movie, uh, I believe. Right, that was first. Well, it's coming out first. Yeah, yeah. started off with that movie. Uh, had some awesome reveals of Giancarlo Esposito's character, uh, which is Sidewinder, um, mm. and uh, you know it's it looked that whole thing that like it just looks great and uh, and obviously Harrison Ford being there uh, was awesome. Well, it looks, to see. I mean, like it looks like it's kind of harkening back to the Winter Soldier style, more of a grounded. They were you know, saying that. They did this, where yeah. They said that. yeah, yeah. So, the reveals were so showing so it trying to be more grounded. Like, trailer was was great and i have to say like it really actually hyped me up much more than i expected i did not expect there to be any especially falcon winter soldier after seeing that yeah after that i was a little, <laughs> I was like, oh, I don't care. And i think we even mentioned that right it's like oh do we like is you know uh is mackie is, is mackie a leading man right, right. it's like i, I don't know i have doubts yeah. about that now right well he's um, taunting looking better He's, taunt, he's taunting Tom see. Holland enough about it, but... Yeah, I mean, it's, it's, it's on the up and up, but you know, we'll still have to see what the final product looks like. Yeah. Uh, what do we have after that? Thunderbolts? Yeah, mm-hmm. Thunderbolts mm-hmm. after that. So the we had... Asterisk. Huh? <laughs> with, there's an asterisk after the name. With an asterisk, yeah. And it was Harbor... Harbor came out in full costume, right? Mm-hmm. David Harbor came out, like, full costume of his character, Great yelling, at, like, why, he's like, why is everybody not dressed up? Uh, I saw that in character in character um, but uh, so I had a little bit for that reveal I guess they were talking about um, what's this uh, US agent um, is going to have agent. yeah have, have some interesting character developments in this one where he, you know I don't know he's a, he, I don't know if anybody likes him right now but uh, well, I mean, you're not supposed to be terrible you know, he's a terrible person I mean this I mean, is this whole thing this is their suicide squad so right right no and it's interesting is I think they said that I mean, I don't know if you can believe them or not, but they're saying that Thunderbolt Ross is not in this movie, even though it's called Thunderbolts, and it's not necessarily Thunderbolts because of him. It's just that's what they named it. Right. And so to me, what could be interesting here is, so one thing that um, the Tom Holland Spider-Man movies has not mm-hmm. touched upon is Green Goblin and Norman Osborn. Yeah. Right? They haven't touched upon it at all, except obviously with 
the Tony McGuire one, right? Yeah. But in the comics, at some point, Norman Osborn is the leader of the Thunderbolts. Right. So to me, that's kind of interesting where it's like, oh, is this how we get the MCU version of Norman Osborn here? Yeah, maybe. Because he, mm-hmm. he plays like a... I think because like the thing, the whole thing about Thunderbolts is that you have these characters, or superheroes, these villains masquerading as a superhero. So it was like, um, you know, somebody was under or was Warbird or whatever, like Miss, mm-hmm. you know, uh, Ms. Marvel and stuff like that. And Scorpion was somebody. Mm-hmm. I think there was Agent Venom or something like that too, or whatever like that. But um, Agent then, Venom, yeah, Agent Venom, yeah. So it could be interesting if that's how they want to tackle. Uh, you know, I'm going for the next uh, Spider-Man villain. Yeah, yeah it's, and the, it's, the Astros family has significance, so we'll see what that's all about. But I think they this is definitely a Florence Pugh, Elena movie. I, I mean, she's going to be the focal point for sure. Absolutely. Yeah, I, just want her. I like her character. Yeah. Yep. She's great. Yeah. Um, and then I think they finished with Fantastic Four, pretty much, right? That was uh, right after the Death Thunderbolts, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah, mm-hmm. Uh, they, obviously there's more, but uh, Thunder. Uh, so they went to uh, Fantastic Four where we had the cast on stage, and they had a flying car. Did anybody talk about this flying car? I, yeah, I was like, fin- how would they do that? Nobody was really talking about yeah. that on Twitter. Like, why is nobody talking about this flying car? Like, like it, there's no ropes. I couldn't find any ropes. Is it all drone powered somehow? Like, I couldn't yeah. figure out what they were doing with it. Um, I didn't see that. It was I a flying heard car. About it. I just, yeah. I didn't see it in action. Uh, no, there was some great. Um, on stage, act, the actors were all there. It was awesome to see that. Uh, and then, obviously, it begins filming today. today. Yeah. Uh, so they start, started shooting on Tuesday. Of this uh, It was funny because Superman wrapped today, and they started filming Fantastic Four today. Um, what I thought was interesting was I think they confirmed that Fantastic Four is set in a different universe, right? They, they did 100% say that. So this is going to be a, a 1960s futuristic world. Right. Um, and it's not going to be an origin movie. No, so, they will already so, be. Yeah, no origins. Origin and they showed a trailer which leaked uh, online, right. so you can, you can watch the trailer. Uh, and Galactus clearly seen in the trailer, which was awesome. First appearance of a Galactus. Um, which which small for a Galactus, but we'll see. Giant head, at least. That's it's not much. a cloud. It's not a cloud. Mm-hmm. Um, so that was great. No mention of Silver Surfer yet, but I'm sure that'll be something we find out later. Well, we know that, yeah. Yeah. It's probably the one that's shielded from the, you know, Online. I know, I know, but I mean, plus they haven't like technically they haven't started shooting, so yeah. yeah. But no, uh, exciting. I like what was leaked from this. It was a cool little uh, like a tech demo of the movie essentially. Mm-hmm. So I, I thought it was really good. Um, it looks great. It's got that. It does have that '60s vibe. Uh, you know, even the characters, the way they're acting and stuff. It's 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 really looks great. So excited yeah, for that. Cast was great. I think they did a good job for the most part. Yeah, uh, we'll see. We'll see. The one like the one that I'm actually most um, not concerned with, but like thought it was odd was you know, Pedro Pascal was, yeah, was fantastic. But hopefully, they, you know, pulls it off. He's a good actor. All right, and then we had the Russos and come they, on stage. And they said they're going to be in the next two Avenger movies also. Yes, as we're getting to know, the Russos then were brought out on stage, right? Uh, or were they already on there? Can't remember. Uh, but they revealed uh, that they are back to direct the next two Avengers movie, uh, Avengers movies. Uh, and the Kang Dynasty movie is uh, well. They did, no so more. like they spoiled it. Like so they like they were saying they came back because they wanted to do Secret Wars. Like mm-hmm. uh, like we we can we want to do this. Like we have an idea. We because they were saying like after Endgame we're done. Like we we yeah. we've given it all. We don't really have much left, and we're out. Uh, but then as time goes on, you know, you, you get to stay away from stuff. That you have ideas and. One of the big things that got them into this stuff, you know, that was the Secret Wars. And obviously, you know, they yeah. don't give them a lot of money, they're going to come back. But Secret Wars was a big thing for them that they felt like they had ideas for and they really wanted to do. But in order to do Secret Wars properly, which I've talked about before, you need to have another movie before that. Yeah. Uh, so it looks like the Do- Kang Dynasty is dead. Uh, Avengers Doomsday is coming first. Um, right. So in, you got. I mean, if you're doing Secret Wars, you've got to have. Yeah, you know, he's, he's quite Yeah. Uh, like I understand you can swap things here and there. Like, oh, we'll make King the Doom character for this or whatever. But the, no, no. I am so happy that this is happening. They're because, moving on from Kang. Not that they're moving on from Kang. It's just you're gonna you get tell the story the way it's supposed to be told now. I think. And yeah. The way that I think as fans Maybe. we want to see. Maybe. I mean, that's the where we're gonna get into this. 
so we had the big reveal, which everybody probably knows about by now in the world. Uh, mm-hmm. Yeah, they said there's only one person. They can play really Victor happy. Von Doom. They didn't say could play Tony Stark because from the back, a Doctor Doom class player you came like out. Completely messed that part What's that? You completely messed that up. I think you should have said it the other way around. Yeah, okay. my fault. <laughs> so uh, I think I may have said it wrong. But anyways, yeah, we had the great reveal of Robert Downey Jr. is back, but this time playing Victor Von Doom. And the, the reveal for him was fantastic. We're just throwing his mask up. and New, ta- new mask, same new, task. Yeah. I thought it was great. I loved it. Um, actually, uh, my wife loved it. She was excited for Marvel for the first time in a while. I just She was excited to go see this oh, coming out now. Oh. Robert Downey Jr. He draws. Dumb, dumbest son of casting ever. <laughs> um... Mm-hmm. I, I don't know what they're going to do, but you're right. I mean, I, they need to get some magic back, I feel like, with like box office, and he is that draw. And they're banking big time on that because his pay, his salary is over $80 million for those two movies. He signed for so, those two movies. So just be clear. So $80 million is given to the Russo brothers oh, no. to do both the movies. Oh, and he's getting more. Yeah. Robert Downey is getting more than that. Yes. With the except, and he only signed on if the Russo brothers were doing it. That was a stipulation, hmm. apparently. Uh, right. So that goes to show that. You know, he felt Infinity War and Endgame were done. Yeah, you know, perfectly. Positively compared to, you know. You know, he's out, they're out, we're both out. But if we're if they're in, if I'm in, they got to be in vice versa. I think that they were definitely a package deal. It was absolutely 100%. Money there's... He also, has, he also has a private jet given to him now. Oh, apparently uh, he's not only having a private jet, he's having private security. Oh, private security, that's right. It's not like he's having a trailer. Like, His own section. He's yeah. having like... A, like a little neighborhood or something yeah. like that. Yeah, like a park. Yeah, like a park, right? So it's like, oh, I mean, you know, I guess, sure. Like, why not, right? But, I mean, they, they, they've made $30 billion with these Marvel movies, and it would not have been possible without him, I don't think. No. Yeah. So, okay. No, I don't disagree with you, Mike. I do, I don't like the casting myself. That's what I was going to say. I yeah. appreciate the actor and what he's done for Marvel movies and for Tony Stark. He is the equivalent of essential Tony Stark. And um, when you think of Tony Stark as a real life person, you think of Robert Downey Jr. That's like you got him as Wolverine. Like there, you don't think of other people playing Tony Stark. Um, so it's kind of it is kind of weird. I assume that there is a plan, and the Russos, they, I have faith in what they're gonna do to make this all make sense and work. But I don't, I don't like the casting myself. Um, but I hope they get proven wrong. My like, major reaction was like. Because I saw a tweet, and I was like, yeah. somebody's obviously making you know, big news yeah. bullshit up. But then I started seeing other tweets by, like, Deadline and, like, Ryan, I was like, oh, well, they, they wouldn't be on this. And I was like, mm-hmm. and I was hanging out with some of the Eastman guys, and we're, I was like, what the fuck? And I said it out loud, and they're like, what? And we were just like, yeah, it's real. And I was just like, okay, like, that's weird, right? Mm-hmm. Um, and yeah, like, you know, it's one of those things where, like, Robert Downey Jr.'s Iron Man had a great... Send off the great, you know, um, end point, you know, end mm-hmm. So it does, like, knee jerk reaction does feel a little weird that it's like, oh, we're going to bring him back, guys, as a new character. I'm like, okay, but kind of cool. Like you said, like, I imagine they have to have something that makes it work, right? Or they have a good idea, they have a good story they want to tell, or whatever. Um, so, yeah, I'll be patient. I'll wait. Doesn't matter to me. The one thing I will hate if they do is if it's a Trevor situation and you get some, you get this and it's like, oh, actually, it's Cillian Murphy's Doctor Doom. I was like, oh, come on, what the heck? Mm-hmm. With the uh, main or whatever. Right. That no, would no, be I don't think they'd do that. Like, I think they'd learn the lesson that one. So, yeah. I don't know if they would. But, but if they did do that, I would be upset. Well, sorry. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I just, I just don't see, like, the in-universe interesting writing that comes from this unless because they, you get and I think this, would be, this would be cheap too sort of cheaply dangle the first like was he an iron man could he become iron man again no like, i i think this is to play off the character's reactions to him revealing his face his face the reactions no, of this was no but if you're banking a lot on maybe it's, maybe they're banking a lot on spider-man being in this in these in these movies and well, that's a pretty big character for him obviously Tony Stark. And that face is going to be a hard time for him to deal with it. You, you can create a story based on I'm giving you ideas. I'm giving you what I'm... I'm not even a writer. I'm throwing out these ideas. 
I think it only becomes interesting. And again, it's cheap if they, you know, dangle the Iron Man return somehow with that. No, I don't think this. Ca- I don't think he survives. One thing I, I did hear a theory online somewhere regarding because like the, the, so the one of the uh, concepts of what's happening here is like Molecule Man is a very important character for the story, and like the theory I heard was that maybe they turn Kang into like Molecule Man. Um, that, that that influence or that um, importance that character had in the stories, they'll just use Kang instead, which I think is a good idea for that to like keep playing around like oh we have this character it's important and now I'll give him significance that doesn't necessarily mean much anymore but it is a significant role that's play. to me I, I'm kind of wondering if they're going to use Doom as like a my, my speculation here is that he's going to find out right because it's not a 616 Doom right I, I don't think that they do that right no. uh, so in whatever multiverse this Doom is residing he finds out about Kang right or learns about multiversal theory right. of existence and stuff like that and somehow he you know defeats that Kang but then goes on to destroy the Kangs that, that we know right because the, the Kang dynasty is done right for various yep. reasons that a lot have to do with a lot of real life stuff uh, and I, I see that as a good way of just like being like hey this is a new villain he's such a badass he got rid of that last one yeah mm-hmm. and destroying yeah. the Kangs has triggered this thing that's now going to happen in because of Deadpool, we um, know there's certain things that the universe can't handle. So <laughs> yeah, I think it's a great idea. That's a that's a you guys wrote a good story there. I like it. So, um, but yeah, Robert Robert Downey Jr. is back, and whether you like it, it's very split. So we'll see what they do. But I think I think overall though it's positive. It's, it's, like, I think yeah. there were those vocal people online at least that were like, oh, there's no direction. There's no that's what we're whatever. saying. Yeah. And now we do, right? We've got direction. We might not know the full story, but I think it's easier to at least be like, okay, well, I'm interested now to see how this progresses. Yeah. Now I want to watch Fantastic Four to find out more. Yeah. They're going to be heavily focused on the both Avengers movies. Uh, and obviously, you know, Captain America and stuff like that. So. Yeah. All right. So, you know, it's, it's I'm, I'm much more excited about the future of Marvel than I was like this time last year, for sure. Yeah, absolutely. And it's, it's crazy to think about when uh, Doomsday does come out, it will have been, what, uh, seven years since Enemy? Yeah, that's probably about right. Well, yeah. The, um, it's 2019 or 2020? Two years, right? Yeah. 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 Um. Yeah. All right. Doctor Doom gonna be like sixty. Yeah, this one is at least if that's the only one we're getting. Who cares? He's gonna be in a freaking suit the whole time. Yeah. I mean, there's no one who's not way older. Not for the money. Not for the money. They're paying to get his face there. He's gonna hardly be in that suit. I bet. We'll see. What do you? He's gonna be walking around as a dude. He's gonna be in his face a lot. You'll see his face, but he'll be in the suit. We'll see his face, but they won't see his face. Like what they did with the Iron Man. It's yeah. Too much pain for. Not like you really need the guy in there. You can just it's why they're not doing the origin story too, because you know, origin of Doom and like Reed Richards is their classmates. Yeah. yeah but they're in different universes. It's, yeah. So we'll see. From each other. Maybe the Fantastic Four movie spawns this. We'll see. I don't know either, but I, mean, I don't think it should. Sure yeah, I don't think it should, but because now that they have Downey Jr. already out there, yeah, I mean, that's, that's a, like I, I don't see him being heavily involved in the plot at all. Oh no, not, not in the plot. I wouldn't think so. I yeah. hope not. Anyway, all right, uh, it's gonna wrap up 780 of the movie cast, folks. Thanks for tuning in once again. We're live on Twitch Tuesday nights at eight o'clock. Mostly except for technical difficulties sometimes. YouTube, if you're watching this, smash that subscribe button. We appreciate it, guys. We'll see you over on the GameCast.